Well, <laughs> as you can see, it's pretty slow outside, huh? My Jeep is all full of snow. <laughs> well, at least it ain't too cold out anyway. Man, I tell you. Oh, well, I'm just waking up and whatnot, and today we're gonna go with a friend of mine to uh, a little town. Well, I guess we should call it a little town called uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota. Or East Grand Forks, Minnesota, Grand Forks, North Dakota. We go and see some movies and uh, possibly give some reviews on them too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering. Well, Frankie, we heard we heard you made partner. Congratulations, or, or what the hell is that all about, or, or whatever. Well, if you uh, watched uh, the latest episode of the Tuesday Night Experiment that I posted, uh, Look how long the video was. <laughs> An hour and 45 minutes and 9 seconds. That's the first time in my entire time of being on YouTube that I've been able to upload a video that long, but in one file. And I found this out the other day. I am partner, but it's a slow process. It's going to be a while till I actually... Uh, get a little revenue because I'm just beginning all that right now what they let me do is just uh, I have no time limit now for my videos so now we can actually have a little fun and because I live here in Thief Fiber now I've got a better connection and everything and faster uploads and whatnot that means I can actually make videos as long as I want you can go up to 20 gigabytes and all that stuff rather than the 15 minute time limit now we can have some fun. And speaking of fun, we're going to take a quick little break. Uh, this next little part here is uh, my friend uh, Michael Strider. I uh, recently just did an uh, interview or like he, he talked at a, at a college or whatnot. Spoke at a college conference or whatnot. And uh, somebody just recently interviewed him. So take a look at that and uh, we'll be right back. More Frank Slauson Show. My name is Michael Strider and I am a celebrity photographer. As a kid, I was fascinated by rock stars. I loved music, I loved groups like KISS and stuff like that. Um, I used to go into bookstores when I was a little boy. My parents would take me to the mall and I would look at uh, magazines like Rolling Stone, stuff like that, and I would always, you know, at the pictures that I would look at, I would always look at who took these pictures and I was more, just as fascinated at the photographers that took the pictures as I was the actual rock stars. And, you know, it just caught on and it, it when I started doing it and I, I, I saw that I could actually capture, uh, you know, the action myself, you know, uh, of the things that these people did on stage, I mean, I was addicted immediately to it. You know, just the, the travel, the just experience all around with it is, is, is really incredible. You're always meeting new people, number one. You're always able to learn something from these people because most of them are very eccentric and you know, there's it's just so much just all around things that you can experience and learn through, you know, through working with all the, the celebrities that I especially I've had I've had a lot of incredible experiences with. These days with a college like you like you have here, it's amazing. You you teach them everything from the very beginning to you know all the effects and all the you know the ways to manipulate photos and and do all this creative stuff it's really the the tools that you guys have at this college are far more than than I had access to when when I first started so just you know being able to utilize everything that you guys teach here from the photoshop to you know all the other subjects i mean it's it's really really amazing and if you have especially you know adding all the, the knowledge the technology if you have all of that and plus you have heart and soul for it, I mean, it's, it's endless the things that you can do. I mean, you know, the sky is the limit. It's, it's something that I love. Well, you know, I love it in my heart, deep down, you know, to the core. I, I just absolutely love it. In the beginning, I would have done it, you know, for free. That's how much, you know, it was just, it was an outlet for me. It was a creative outlet and it was, it was a rush to be able to stand at the feet of these, these people that I idolized as a kid. And, you know, I get to work with them and a lot of them I've became friends with. You should experiment with all types of photography and during that period 
you know, you'll find something that, you know, you've got a niche in and that you can, that you like to do, you know, uh, something that's close to your heart. Um, you have to make yourself, it's so competitive these days, you know, you can go to Walmart and buy a camera for uh, less than a hundred bucks and uh, take pictures. The average person can do that, a 10 meg a megapixel camera, 12 megapixels, whatever. You have to set yourself apart from everybody else that's doing it because everybody is a photographer these days. But if you can set yourself apart and offer something that, you know, other people do not offer, then you can be successful with it and you can make money and you can, you know, have a, a great career with it. You have to be different than everybody else, though. <laughs> my name is Michael Strider and my creativity is the art of photography. Alright, we're back. <laughs> Well, you're probably wondering, well, first of all, I hope you enjoyed that little segment. Uh, congratulations to my good friend Michael Strider for uh, uh, being able to speak at a, a class or, not, or at a college, university or whatnot. That's pretty cool, you know. I interviewed, see, the connection between him and I is that I interviewed him here back in 2006, and he was, he's a big influence on me because here he, he's kind of, he kind of started out the way that I did. You know, as far as with radio and all that stuff, and even with video and whatnot. Uh, but he's he's doing uh, he's a photographer, as you heard and whatnot. And uh, I think it's just cool that he's able to share some of his successful stories with other people, and maybe inspire some people, maybe even inspire some of you guys. Uh, but yeah, so I figure you kind of like that as a way to kind of kick off this new uh, new video here and whatnot. And uh, I guarantee you, this video is going to be a little long, so. If you guys are, you know, are bored, get some popcorn and whatnot, and you know, we're gonna treat this. We're gonna give this the ultimate experience. Now that I can make longer videos, all that we're gonna try to have as much fun as we can, and you know, whether I own the material that I'm portraying or whatnot, I think it's just great that I can do a start doing a variety type of video it's like I've always wanted to, you know, all homemade, you know, just with my little flip 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 cam here and. Uh, you know, get a chance to entertain all you guys the way that I've always wanted to with segments and with, uh, you know, just good times or whatnot. I, I know a lot of people were, were kind of still wondering, you know, how this is going to work, seeing how I'm not allowed to do any shooting at, or videotaping at, at my house or where I live. Well, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, out of respect for my roommate. I mean, he's a good, he's a good guy. I mean, I know, you know, it's not right for this to be like this, but it, it is kind of the way it is, you know. It's either that or I don't have a place to stay, you know. I know it sounds kind of cruel, but it is kind of the way it is. And I decided, you know, that if I can do on-location videos, I mean, I want to do this a long time, for a long time, but now being a partner, I can do it. Who's that over there? Huh? <laughs> it's Johnny Pfeffer Corporate. <laughs> It's not just Shawnee Pepper Incorporated, it's Johnny. Not much. I was just telling people on YouTube about our little trip. Like they need to know? Well, you know, the whole world needs to know. Oh, sure. Oh, <laughs> sure. At least, at least I can, uh, at least it's warm in here. <laughs> Well, I could just stand here too and while well, I wait since we're you know, going to be leaving pretty soon. Yeah. So what's up, John? You were you were uh, you were not wearing all your clothes, but I saw you early. <laughs> uh, that's my good friend John, who you've seen in a few other videos that we made. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be going to Grand Forks and having some good times tonight. I found out that that movie Unstoppable is playing uh, at the same time your Chronicles of Narnia is playing. <laughs> I found out that movie Unstoppable. Hey, I found out that movie Unstoppable is playing at the same time your Chronicles of Narnia is playing. So I don't know. I mean, if if you're gonna go see Chronicles, I might just go see Unstoppable over there instead. Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, it starts around the same time pretty much and. It's a. I haven't even seen the other ones yet. You know. 
message to it for Christmas time. Not yeah, I want to see a message about a train that's trying to run away and <laughs> kill people. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry, you know. I, I would love to see oh, that here at the. Sorry, no, I, I, I would love to see that happen here at the Fever, but you know, who knows, you know. You know. <laughs> Anyway, so, you know, we'll see what goes down. Yeah, 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 very funny. We, we can't show no nudity here on YouTube here, jeez. That's gonna hurt my partnership, you know? <laughs> and nobody wants to see the cracky... Oh, Moss, you know. Yeah, nobody wants to see the crack of your ass anyway. I heard too many sounds from you last night, oh, you know, when you're farting. <laughs> oh, anyway, so that's what we're doing today, and uh, we'll get more footage later. Yeah, I've heard of KTEL Records. Yep. Yep. I was working at a place as a temp in the Twin Cities once, and I, he was a regular employee there, and I was working with him, and, and he was giving me a lot of crap in front of this gal one day, so I flipped him off, and he, he took out a knife and stabbed it in front of me on the table. Uh, and, oh, really? Like, huh. He was trying to scare me, and I, would, I just looked at him, like, you know, I just kind of stared at him, like, oh, yeah? <laughs> I just gave him a mean look. Well, of course, we all know you were a big badass back in the day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I had to turn the camera on because you're telling a really good story. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing? We're going to Grand Forks, huh? Hey, can you read between the lines? No, yeah, read between the lines. Maybe you're the one that flipped yourself off. Boy Scouts. John thinks that somebody flipped him off. I don't know why, but yeah. do you have enemies or something? Or uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did, though. I mean, he had his hand up. It looked like he was... Huh. I don't know. I, 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 I've never, I, I, I can't pay attention to somebody like, going 100 miles an hour, you know, just flipping everybody off. It wasn't just enjoying their day and not having to work or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, maybe, you know, maybe people randomly, maybe, maybe it's National Flip Off. <laughs> you're supposed to flip off everybody you see. It's him saying hi or whatever. You're supposed to say, hey, brother. Hey, how you doing there? Maybe he's from some country where that's some kind of greeting, you know, like instead of California. Peace, they go, oh. California, remember? Remember, uh, remember the Mr. Bean movie, where what? he's like, uh, that what movie? Bean, Bean, the movie, where, where he's like, uh, uh, giving the thumbs up to this motorcycle guy or whatever, this biker guy, and then he, the biker guy flips him off, and Mr. Bean thinks that that's the way people do it in California, that uh, where it's like high, they just flip people off. So he's like flipping off old ladies and everything. <laughs> people are running around the streets or whatever. It's like. Hey! And they had no roof in the car, so yeah. well, there was a inflatable, like a retractable roof or whatever, or hood or whatever. And then uh, he would just go out to people, yeah. He'd just go up, <laughs> waving an arm up in the air or whatever, flipping people off. Or whatever. And you know, the other guy driving was like this, you know, just like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. You know? What are you doing, man? So, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Funny story, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just had a sad, I just had a sad thought all of a sudden. I was thinking about. I don't know why, but I was thinking about the, that lady that went to the, to the bakery and the people that died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a nice lady. I guess. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, we, we talked about the, the whole cooking thing. That's kind of how my memory from her, but yeah, I don't know. You know, it's... I think the I reason I thought about that is because I saw somebody drive by that kind of looked like her. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. As far as I know, it's... She was a pretty decent person, and the fact that she's work, worked at Hugo's for as long as she did. I read, did you read her obituary at all? Uh, paper, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so, a little bit. Yeah, she had a pretty uh, tremendous uh, work experience, anyway. She, before, even before she came to Hugo's or whatever, she was she was doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, I saw that. I saw your, uh, your great aunt. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Obituary. Yeah. Yeah, she... Oh, that was, uh, I mean, I, I know 85 years old is kind of, you know, you know, kind of getting towards the end of the run, we'll call it. But, you know, she lived a pretty good life after she was, you know, after her husband died. I don't know. It's just sad to see how she died, you know. Nobody, yeah, she, she died, you know, at her house, you know. Nobody, nobody knew when, when it happened or how it happened or whatever, but it just happened. There you go. It just happened. Sometimes life bites in the butt sometimes. Right? It happens, right? Yeah. What? I mean, not to, yep. not to, not to make light of it or no, no, no. think the force come in. Yeah. yeah. What? What? It? Yeah, sometimes. Actually, it was shit, but... 
Well, I, I didn't know if you want me to swear or not on the video here. You know, I mean, we can if you want to, but, you know. Or you I mean, can say black I mean, shit, I mean, shit's kind of a, is kind of technically kind of a swear word, but it's, but it's just a word, just a kind of a, yeah. kind of a bad word for crown. But it's yeah. Or we use a... See, John and I, what you don't know is that we actually use different terminology when we swear sometimes. When we're together. Like, we watch that Scott Pilgrim movie, we say, Oh, black box, if we're swearing somebody, you know? <laughs> like, say, you black box, black or box, or, frostbite. Yeah, or, or, or frost, frostbite falls, or whatever. Or, oh, hairy snowballs, or whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, snowballs. Or some, oh, there's a dead deer in the bridge. Well, we should get it on film. Pick it up. <laughs> Bring it with. You know, get some free venison, huh? <laughs> Roadkill Cafe. Yeah, why not? We're, we're, we're part hillbilly. Roadkill Cafe. Yeah, we're, we're part hillbilly. Our, our, our ancestors part hillbilly or, or something. Redneck. Redneck or whatever. <laughs> we all have rednecks or whatever. I, I do have to wear shaves sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know how to shave. You're cutting yourself all the time. No, I'm not cutting. It's just I get, I get a red triple rash on my neck. Ah, yes. Yeah. Nobody wants to know that, John. <laughs> Jeez. I didn't say where I was. Oh, that's right. It's, his name is Harry. Harry, I'll go with my body. Yeah, he's like the Robin Williams of Harry, Harry people. Harry, I'll go with my body. I'll show you guys. So it, yeah, what it, it, oh, yeah, it was Jonathan Winters who used to say that. He played it when he dressed up like an old, that old lady. You know? Oh, yeah. I'll go with my body. I get a warm feeling. I'll go with my body. Well, because I know certain people are, will probably be watching this video, I'm not going to show everything I got. You know, because some of these are Christmas presents for certain certain people, anyway. So I will just, yeah, for you, John. Because I love you, John. Oh, for me, yes. Yeah. But I will show you one of the things that I got, anyway. Three Stooges. The yep, first yep, yep, yep. volume. And John loves the Three yep, Stooges. Yep, 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 yep. John, oh, at one time, was a part oh, Stooges. Oh, Larry Cheese! Oh, Larry Cheese! <laughs> John was part Stooges oh. at one time, you know. But this is at Walmart at 50. <laughs> This is at Walmart, it's $15 and you know it's the first volume. I want to get all all eight, or at least if not all eight, at least the ones with uh, curly and all that, you know, because I love curly. You can't pass up the original three anyway. I guarantee that. So there you go. Oh nice guy. Yeah. Oh no. Doing some impressions. Why I oughta Why I oughta all right, so we'll see you guys when we get close to the Grand Forks. We're gonna go see what what films are we seeing today? Chronicles of Narnia. We're gonna see Chronicles of Narnia: Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And, and 3D, huh? And maybe Yogi Bear. Yeah, in 3D. Yeah, hey, boo. <laughs> yeah, hey, boo. Yeah. Yeah, let's go get us some picnic baskets. Yeah. Because I know John wanted to see the uh, Chronicles, the third Chronicles of Narnia. I've never seen any of them, so I'm, I'm completely yeah, lost. Sucks to be you. No, just kidding. Ah, ha, ha, I'm completely ha, ha, lost. I don't even know. Oh, no, we don't that. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just slapstick comedy there. R R R. Humor. Anyway, so. Robin Williams impression. Humor. Get down, get down, get back up again. Oh goodness. Maybe how about some. That's why I love being a partner because his videos can go longer. They can go as long hey, as I want. Maybe how about a BJ? <laughs> maybe how about a BJ? Yeah, I mean, uh, Blue Power. Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, 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 Bubble, 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 uh, Bubble, Bubble Yum, Bubble, Bubble Yum, uh, yeah. No, no, Bubble, uh, let's see. Bubble Juice or something. Oh, BJ, uh, let's see. Yeah, how much some Bubble uh, Juice? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some Bubble Juice. Some Blueberry Juice. Yeah. Blueberry Juice. Yeah, that's the tip of Wow, I'm scared now. Anyway. We'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Actually, while while we're taking a break, enjoy. Nanu, nanu. And enjoy uh, a little bit of this. Uh, I got a friend named Ron Fox. Or Ray, his real name's Ray Petty, and he does some stuff, you know, on blog TV, like it's a uh, social network site. Anyway, he, he made a funny little video uh, on blog TV recently about how we see the news. So enjoy that. And a lot of fun shit going on up in the news. There's a new study that found that old fuckers, you know, senior citizens, they can actually keep their minds sharp by doing puzzles, brain teasers. I have an 80, 81 year old grandfather that uh, loves to play solitaire and all the games on the internet and, and just, just as primary himself. Now, you got to understand, they like to keep their minds sharp by doing puzzles and brain teasers, which for many senior citizens these days, the TV remote qualifies as a puzzle or a brain teaser just itself. <laughs> That's why they stay on the internet. What goes, uh, what goes ho, ho, ho? Anybody? Ho, ho, ho. 
Look goes ho, ho, ho. Uh, that would be Charlie Sheen's dating list on Christmas Eve. <laughs> It was close. It was close. Oh, Jane Fonda. You know, she, she's almost 73. She looks pretty good for her age, right? 73. She just released a new workout video. 73 years old. It's called Sweatin' to the Defibrillator. <laughs> oh, geez, that's great. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about that, everybody. Also, sales of eggs. Ooh, listen to this. Sales of eggs have rebounded sharply after the August recall of 550 million eggs. 550 million eggs. That's a lot of fucking work, chickens. Potentially contaminated with salmonella. Americans were begging to suffer from cholesterol withdrawals, but 500, 550 million fucking eggs. Think about that. Also, uh, over in Germany, this guy got arrested after the police found a six-foot-tall marijuana plant disguised as a Christmas tree. <laughs> he would have got away with it if he hadn't decorated the thing with fucking empty Twinkies wrappers. You know? <laughs> What are you fucking thinking, Munchy Man? That's kind of funny in itself. Yeah, six foot fucking tall. You know, basically comes up to my nipples. All right. Okay, I knew you'd like that. Moving right along, we got another Facebook. You know, they rolled out the new profile pages, right? I don't know how many of you like them. They roll out the pages. They pack a lot more information about you on your home page than ever before. I mean, that much data on one page is a fucking gold mine. I mean, last year Santa Claus was paid a hundred million dollars by Hustler for his naughty list. Hey, let's go to Facebook and find out where all the hoes are at. Also, Walmart, uh, they're in the news. They announced that they're going to partner with Homeland Security. As you know, they're going to help battle against domestic terrorism. Over 600 stores are going to participate. Uh, airport security wasn't humiliating enough. Now we're all going to get pat downs from the Walmart critters. Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you come on through, honey. I like your titty. Walmart, yeah, that's right. Also, Baywatch, uh, there's a, the chick on Baywatch. What's her name? Donna D'Erico. She said the TSA screeners targeted her for a nude scan at the L.A. airport due to her looks. Now, the models are pissed off. They're, they're not about to go out of their way to the music industry and newspapers and let people download their pictures for free. <laughs> Now, they were mad at her than a motherfucker. Mad at a motherfucker. I'm telling you all about it. Yeah, it's true. It's absolutely true. Also, what else has happened? Oh, the Vatican. Popey Pope House, right? Popey Pope's House. Uh, the Vatican was voted the most ecological city in the world thanks to giant solar panels installed on the roof. They not only save an electricity, but the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel is even more impressive in flashing fucking neon now. <laughs> Thank you to the sun, everybody. Which is kind of cool in itself. And if you're Catholic, okay. Uh, there's a recent study that says 20% of adult Americans, 20%, they say that they suffer from a certifiable mental illness, and that's bad news. The good news is they're easily notified to seek treatment. Now, most of them were in jackass 3D, by the way, but it is what it is. Also, Kentucky Fried Chicken or KFC, let's be politi politically correct, they offered a $20,000 scholarship for the best tweet on Twitter about why they should win. Now, for KFC, instead of a tweet, shouldn't it be called a, a cluck? <laughs> That's a chicken joke for those of you that don't give a fuck, all right? Good. Also, travelers are also pissed off about all these uh, invasive searches at the airport, like we were talking about, to which uh, the DHS security, Janet Napolitano, says that they have the right to travel by other means, like Greyhound Bus. Where's the invasive searches? Well, they're performed by the drifter in the next seat. Uh, <laughs> so on the bus, you're going to get felt up no matter how you fucking look at it. Also, you know, we talked about Charlie Sheen earlier. Great day for Charlie. Great day. He's agreed to do a cameo on the show Walking Dead, which is a change because normally he's uh, walking drunk. <laughs> walking Dead, one of the top ten TV shows this year. Top ten TV shows. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, I usually recommend it. Also, speaking of huge, there was a snowstorm that hit Paris last week. You think the Midwest and all that? No. Hit Paris last week. It caused mass confusion as the Parisians ran around trying to figure out how to surrender to a fucking snowstorm. Hey, okay, we're pussies. We give up. We give up. Also, there's a, in Britain, we're going from Paris to Britain. This is all international tonight. There was this woman in Britain. She called the police. I don't know if you read this. She called the police to report a stolen snowman and has been branded completely irresponsible. This crazy whack bitch. The police organized the lineup. Uh, when they turned the lights on, it melted. <laughs> so, needless to say, that's something that we're never going to get an end to. Also, the German national has been charged with the illegally shipping $300,000 worth of tarantulas into the United States. Yeah, they, they believe that he's part of the World Wide Web. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't fucking hit me. Don't fucking hit me. Also, oh, the maker of Tabasco. For those of you, I don't know if you've seen the, the video on the internet about Raunch takes one for the team on Five Awesome Studs where I had to drink the fucking Tabasco. The maker of Tabasco is making its first ad agency change in nearly a quarter of a century, hiring uh, Ogilvy West in Los Angeles. Now, during the review, candidates described McElhaney as one of the year's hottest accounts <laughs> in tobacco. And I mean, Tabasco. Also, also, Leonardo da Vinci, right? They find this un- unverifiable uh, manuscript. They say it's by Da Vinci. It was discovered in the library in France. Now, the curators are going to carefully examine the entire work, but so far, 
It appears to be a spec movie script entitled Mona Lisa's Roman Holiday. <laughs> she was a hoe. But you never know it by looking at her face. If she was on lie to me, they would never be able to figure that out. Who the fuck is calling me this time of night? Somebody from the 917 area code. All right, let's see who the fuck this is. Hold on. Now, who's this? Hello? Hello? All right, somebody clearly don't know what the fuck they're doing. Also, I thought we were going to have something good there for a minute. Also, uh, uh, NASA sold hundreds of computers without erasing their hard drives. You hear about this? They didn't erase the hard drives. They sold all these computers from NASA. They contained some of their most guarded secrets, space shuttle construction diagrams, rocket design plans, and the formula for Tang. <laughs> Unbelievable. The shit that people forget to take off the fucking computers nowadays. Old, old stuff. Also, New York City will soon require all taxi crap, like all the cab drivers, they got to wear uniforms. Their new designer outfits are going to include a built-in holster, a jacket with change pockets, and an air freshener on a rope. For all you people that stink in the fucking taxi cab. <laughs> WikiLeaks. Oh, I love the Julian Assange. I love WikiLeaks. They have released details of sites that are vital to U.S. national interests. Among them are a cobalt mine in the Congo, a Canadian power plant, and the company making artificial tanner used by the cast of Jersey Shore. <laughs> big, big fucking secrets. Now released by WikiLeaks. Also, Derek Jeter, as you know, New York Yankees, right? He's actually pissed off at the way his $51 million contract deal came down. He's pissed. He was so mad he had one of the people pick up something inexpensive and throw it at the wall for him. <laughs> 51. He's pissed. Texas got hit by brush fires recently uh, when cold, dry winds swept across the Lone Star State. It was intense. Willie Nelson was pulled over by Texas cops. When he opened the door, more smoke poured into the bus than actually poured out for once. I mean, <laughs> hey. There's a study that says women, girls as young as three years old. Girls as young as three years old want to be thin. That's a study. It's little three-year-old boy, they want to be thin. Apparently that pipe dream is pretty much out the window by the time they put on the kindergarten size five. <laughs> little fat bitches that they are. Yeah, well, that's the way we see the news in and around the world. I don't care if you like that or not. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Cut it! Boom! Yeah. But nobody knows you. I want to be remembered for that. I don't know. This is why we make videos for memories. You're on film right now. Uh, okay. John's going to, uh, <laughs> he has a dirty version of uh, the Beverly Hills theme song he's going to share with yeah, you guys. The perverted, ver perverted version of the Beverly Hillbillies theme song. Let's hear a story about a man named Jed, a horny mountaineer just trying to just keep his sex drive fed. Then one day, when in a horny mood, grabbed Billy May, threw her in the bed, pulled down his pants. Pulled out his worm, and out from the worm came a bubbling sperm. White gold, Texas baby maker. The next thing you know, Jed's father twins. Kid and folks say, Jed, get the hell out of here. Jen said, does it well up yours too. And grab Jelly May, throws her in the truck, and says, I don't give a fuck, get off the drive to Hollywood. Yeah, land of pimps, prostitutes, drug addicts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, John, for sharing that. <laughs> I didn't know if you knew the remember the words or whatever. <laughs> Jeez, you got any more songs you want to share or what? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll hear my perverted version of the Gilgamesh Island theme song. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I tell you, why you're not a guest on Conan O'Brien or, or Dave Lemon, I have no idea. You, know? <laughs> you can do your own stand-up comedy, and people would just love it. You know? <laughs> Well, thanks yeah. for sharing it, John. Yeah. You'll win an Emmy for that one. Yes. <laughs> and that's always important. Get that out of my face before I break it, before I throw it out the window. You would really do that, John? Sure. It's the Christmas time of the year, whatever, and you would really throw this out the window? Sure. And then I have to go and catch it and Just grab it? Be thankful that's all I do. <laughs> hey, it's nighttime now. Be thankful that's all I do. Yeah, but it's nighttime now, and you know, if you threw it, if you threw it like in the snowbank or something, you know, in a dark alley, I wouldn't be able to find it. You know. Okay. <laughs> what would I do? Oh, no, no. no. I guess I'm. Well, I, I guess I'm breaking the law. I'm sorry. No. After some of the stories you told me today. You? After some of the stories you told me today, I tell you. <laughs> I don't know who the real lawbreaker is, you know? What are you trying to say? 
Trying to be a smart, a smart arse black box. I don't know. I just saw this. I wish I had a uh, light on the, the camera here that I wouldn't be so get so many dark shots here. But oh well. You look like you look like a black man, so that's okay. <laughs> a, a black man with a fart. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I pity the fool. This is it. But we're in Grand Forks and having a great time. And what do you think of that Chronicles of Narnia? You you were excellent, excellent. Yeah, we watch it. Very, very Narnalicious. Well, that's my first time very, watching it. Very Narnia-licious or something. Well, that was the first time I was ever watched that uh, movie in 3D, like the, the with the new glasses. I used to just watch it with the red and blue or whatever, the original 3D, you know. But <laughs> never. So it definitely made a difference. Maybe maybe I just. We'll try to understand this whole 3D revolution more now that I, you know, have seen something. 3D. You should have. Too bad you didn't see that uh, Legends of the Guardians. That was a cool. That was very cool. Yeah, but you got that movie, that huh? Was in 3D. You just bought that today. Yeah, but it's not in 3D though. Well, then you sure bought the 3D Blu-ray or whatever. <laughs> I don't think the Blu-ray was in 3D either, was it? It's Kim. Yeah. Remember that Polar Express movie that we saw? That was in Blu-ray 3D or whatever. Uh, yeah. So that's for all the fans, the people that can afford all that. I mean, I got Inception on Blu-ray, but that's, you know, that's just because I was challenged by, you know. I'm talking about 3D or not Blu-ray. Well, 3D could be a Blu-ray and DVD. Heck, heck, I bet you 3D could be in VHS if you wanted it to be. <laughs> that's a tape skip or it like goes up and down or whatever in the frontage. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Oh, no. Ah. no. <laughs> we love Hugo's. Oh, come on, John. If it was for you. If it wasn't for Hugo, if it wasn't for Hugo's, we wouldn't be able to do go to Grand Forks today. So we gotta be very, yeah, we gotta be very grateful. You know, like we got good people that well, that let us do this. Well, you know, I, I said we got, we gotta be, we gotta be thankful that we got, you know, good jobs and stuff. You know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, T. Fever has definitely grown this year. Holy. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, yeah. Drugs. prescription drugs anyway. I don't know. So yeah, so we're just gonna go to Tar Tarjay. Oh wow, cool! Look at that. Oh yeah, holy moly! Look at all this. <laughs> don't don't you just love the holidays? Yes, actually. Yeah. Except that work, I don't really like having to work hard. Wow. It's the way it goes, though, you know. Look, Walmart. Walmart. I mean, we've never seen that before. <laughs> Look at all these people. It's, I feel like we're in the cities or something. You know? uh, I don't believe me. If it was the cities, it would be a lot more cars than this. Really? More cars than a thousand cars or something? Maybe twice. Oh, bumper to bumper. Oh, okay. Bumper to bumper. It would be like moving at a snail's pace because it would be like move an inch and then. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then you say a pinch to grow an inch or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. And you say, Kilgar, take me away. <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, a lot of traffic tonight. Solid teaching, irrelevant <laughs> information. Hey, oh, look, the Texas. What's that? Roadhouse, yes. That's a good place to eat. That's a little. Oh, man, it's baby side. Yeah. A fancy bus. Well, anyways, <laughs> just want to say, you know, thanks for bringing me to Grand Forks. And, you know. I get paranoid if you uh -huh. put that in my face because I think you're going to use it to blackmail me or something. Blackmail you? Why would I do that? <laughs> I'd email you. I won't blackmail you. Don't worry. <laughs> so, yeah, John, I got stuff on you, man. If I, I, you give me $100, I'm going to show it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're very you're you're very entertaining. I need you, you know. Yeah. You're my you're my sidekick, you know. What? No, no, <laughs> yeah, you're my sidekick. I'm Batman, I'm you're your Robin, or, or, or Batman, you know. Oh, oh, okay, okay, well, whatever. Right. <laughs> Look, there's a golden corral. This is where we're gonna eat. There's John's there's John's house right there. <laughs> anyway, so it was fun. We got we got a lot of stuff done. Yeah. Got a lot of stuff done today, anyway, and spent a lot of money, of course, as fools as we are. But I think with the presents that I got for for all my relatives and stuff, I think they'll be happy with what I got all of them. I hope so. Anyway. 
I hope so. You dream of this kid. <laughs> I dream of Jeannie. <laughs> I dream of Johnny. No one's ever happy with this kid. Now, anyway, it looks like I got a low battery anyway, so I'm going to shout out the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any last words to the camera or any people that, you know? Yeah, yeah, he's got a low battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, black box yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Say goodbye to the camera, there, John. Frostbite. Goodbye. Frostbite. All right. See you later, John. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But don't hang too loose, right? <laughs>